In this video, we'll be talking about the launch content for Halo Infinite, customizable HUDs, and potential mod support, and, and if Blue Team will return in Halo Infinite. And I answer those questions in this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing a different kind of video. We're doing another Q&A video. I do these videos periodically on my channel where I go on my community page. I ask you guys, do you have any questions about Halo Infinite? And you guys certainly responded, which I really do appreciate the support on the channel. And don't worry if your question wasn't answered within this video, I will be pulling other questions from this same thread as well. And if you want your own opportunity to get part of one of these videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel to know when those community posts do go live. Well, let's get right into the content here. El Elyon, friend of the channel here, asked, how do you think Infinite's launch will go content-wise and how do you hope it does? Also, keep up the great work. This was actually the most liked comment on the post, so you know I had to answer this one. Well, how do I think the content-wise Halo Infinite's launch will go? Honestly, I think it's going to do well. I have a strong feeling that 343 has really been listening from the community as well. I mean, they've already confirmed social playlists coming into Halo Infinite. I think it was pretty much assumed, but I think it's officially confirmed with the last development update. Unlike Halo 5's launch, where everything was ranked besides Warzone, which, you know, I do enjoy playing ranks, but not every single game. So it just became a little too sweaty. So 343 recognizes that. And so there is going to be a ranked and a social playlist options for you to play. I mean, he's talking about content. Is he talking about kind of like game modes you can play or is it actually like things within the game? Because I think we're going to see a lot of customization within the initial launch of Halo Infinite, like a lot of customization. Honestly, so much that you're not actually probably going to be able to unlock everything, at least within the first like few months or something like that of Halo Infinite's launch. Because Halo Infinite's multiplayer is going to be free to play and no barrier of entry when it comes to Xbox Gold or anything, it's just completely free. Turn on a console, turn on a PC, you can play Halo Infinite. And so it's been genuinely well received to monetize the customization, and that's gonna be the probably the main source of income for this game, actually. So there's gonna be a lot of options when it comes to customization. Uh, probably a season pass as well, which that will have tons of content, probably like weapon charms, I'm assuming, probably weapon skins, armor skins, vehicle skins, probably. And they said some other customization as well, like fusion coils, I think they mentioned it as well, which is pretty interesting to think about. And armor customization is going to be insane as well. So that side of the content, I think it's going to be thick with content. Now, when it comes to game modes to play, I'm sure we're going to have our Team Slayer, or probably a free for all, a probably new big fancy mode that is yet to be announced, but we'll probably know about at E3, probably SWAT, Team Snipers, and things like that. So it's going to be kind of interesting, actually, how they do this launch, because the big new fancy, you know, sticker, big glowing light of whatever you want to call it analogy for what's going to be the seller of this game hasn't been announced yet. All we know is that it's a Halo game. It has a campaign and it has multiplayer. Is it going to have firefight? It's going to have forge, but how good is forge going to be? We have never seen it. How long is the campaign? How replayable is the campaign? How many multiplayer maps are there going to be? There's still a ton of questions that need to be answered and we probably won't really know a whole lot until probably the last few months before the launch. We'll definitely, I think we'll get a good idea of what we're going to get for Halo Infinite on launch at least by E3, which is next month, which is going to be essentially Halo's big coming out party where if they don't pull out all the stops on this E3, I don't know what 343 is doing or what they need to hide because they need to get people excited for this because there's likely going to be a new Battlefield game coming out this fall, which a lot of people are going to be excited about, as well as your annual Call of Duty for your shooter side of things. So you have three main bits of competition you got to go against. Plus, there is that rumored next gen update coming for Warzone for Call of Duty whenever that releases, probably in the fall to kind of boost up people's excitement for the game. And there's a ton of other great games coming out this fall. So there's a lot of good competition this fall for Halo Infinite. But hopefully, like I said, they can pull out all the stops at E3 to get people really excited for this. Ether Chase asks, do you think 343 will ever add customizable HUDs to Halo Infinite? Example, changing the color to a red HUD color instead of the normal blue. I think this, this would be an amazing addition for customization within Halo Infinite. Like we said, stated in the previous question, customization is going to be the big focus when it comes to Halo Infinite. And this would be an awesome way to customize your HUD, changing your, up your colors in some way, or even better, having different styles of HUD. I mean, like they kind of introduced that with Halo 5, right? With each character with the, what's playable within the campaign, having their own unique HUD, their own unique hues of colors and things like that. 
How awesome would that be to be able to have your own kind of stylized HUD that you personally like for your Halo game? That would just kind of also make it feel like you're Spartan in a way too, because obviously you're looking through the visor of your Spartan. You would think you'd be able to kind of customize the way the visor looks. Now there's also going to be kind of an interesting way how they go about doing this because obviously they need to have like the same kind of stuff in the same locations like ammo counter weapon that's going to be in the lower right, your shield is going to be at the top, your radar is going to be in the lower left, but how do you modify from there with extra squiggly lines, different colors, more like neon style, more minimalistic stuff? I don't know. We'll just kind of wait and see on that, but I think that'd be an amazing addition when it comes to customization. Again, like they've said previously that if we liked Halo Reach's customization, we're going to love the customization for Halo Infinite. So I would absolutely love to see a customizable HUD, at least for the colors. I would hate to see them to try to monetize or at least try to hold back like a grind for like red HUD instead. You know, I would like to see that maybe just be an option when it comes to picking your color. But like I said, with free to play multiplayer, you kind of have to like, you know, top up the customization in certain ways. The more important thing is that they're going to be able to give players free ways to play the game to earn that stuff. As long as there's a free and balanced way to where it's not an insane grind where you're like losing health because you're trying to grind for sp specific things within the game, but also be able to play it a lot for free, I think there should be that nice balance between the two. They've stated this in a previous development update as well where they don't want to create a grind machine which they recognize Halo 5's XP, max XP grind was exactly that where in Halo Infinite they're trying to avoid those kind of things. I have a feeling with like XP they might go the same route like seasonally with like max seasonal max ranks rather than like overall max ranks. Kind of like what we see right now with like Call of Duty where like each new season your rank resets back down to one but you get to keep like your prestige emblem and people know that how long you've really played the game kind of thing which I think is a really great idea. I'd love to see that come back something like that come for Halo Infinite. It'd be sweet. Atomic Clum asks how much mod support will there be? Will it be like Skyrim or will it be bare bones like early MCC? They said in the post that they had features that PC players wanted, so naturally, I think modding. That's actually kind of an interesting point. I did not think of modding when I read that part of their most recent development update. Let's go over the quotes so we're all on the same page right here. For enthusiast features and customizability, we have very good ultra wide and super ultra wide support, triple keybinds, or supporting a wide range of input devices. You can play the game on PC using a non-Xbox controller or with a mouse and keyboard when you're playing on console. Advanced sensitivity and acceleration sliders for a mouse. There's so much we're working on and we have plenty of ideas for features after the initial launch as well. So I wasn't really thinking of mod support. Pretty much every free to play to game that I can think of that's like at least a triple A free to play game doesn't really support any kind of modding. Generally because with the game being free to play that people can just make accounts however they want. And if you give people tools within your engine to be able to create, well, people will certainly will take that time to create some uh, well, less like happy things for your average players, as in cheats. And 343 recognized that in the recent development updates, stained essentially that like, yes, we do know that anti-cheat is going to be very important when it comes to PC and being free to play with crossplay as well. Though they also don't want that anti-cheat to be super intrusive to your system itself mainly because they basically cited uh, the way Valorant does their anti-cheat where it essentially like locks into your system. If you're cheating, like your system can just never play that game ever again kind of thing. and actually can affect the ways other programs on your PC could work. So it's a very intrusive anti-cheat. It really works, but it's very intrusive on your system as well, which they're trying to strike that balance, obviously. I think MCC has done a pretty good job with anti-cheat, even though recently we have seen some cheats come in. I personally haven't seen it, but I've seen clips online and stuff like that happening. Probably more at the higher end levels of gameplay as well. You probably start seeing a little more cheats being implemented. So that's really the big issue with that modding support. And also the second half is just legality of things. If you give people like ability to create content utilizing copywritten assets, People are probably out there on the internet are gonna make like a not Halo game and say and you know create stuff from in-game assets and try to make money off of that, which is obviously Microsoft does not want that to happen. It's IP, it's copyright, you can't give that stuff to people. And so that's what actually the issue that came with Halo Online, where Microsoft actually had to shut that down because some of these modders found these copyright and assets, tried to make it a mod to where you can play it online. And they made it work, but then Microsoft's like, hey, 
you can't do that without our permission. Yes, I know it's lame, but honestly, like given the grand scope of things, there's a lot of people who can do very bad things with stuff like that. So when it comes to mind support, and giving people that kind of access to your systems can be pretty dangerous. And it depends how good the anti-cheat is along without being super intrusive. But I personally, yeah, I would love to see mod support in the game. Uh, you know, modify the graphics, textures, or, you know, do some crazy character rigs. And so you have like, you know, Barney the Dinosaur playing as Eshram or something weird like that. Like that would be pretty freaking hilarious and awesome to see. Though I don't believe we'll see any form of mod support with Halo Infinite at its launch at least. Last question is from Pato's Autocare. Do you think Blue Team will make a return in Halo Infinite at some point? We've waited so long to see Fred, Kelly, and Linda on the gaming screen and honestly halo 5 did them a disservice by how little we interacted with them well the most recent example of blue team in the halo infinite ramp up to that story at least would be shadows of reach i went through the audiobook of that and yeah the whole team the whole gang is together they're out in the universe you know saving the world one battle at a time kind of thing so they certainly are in within the storytelling realm of the universe of halo but will we see them in the vanilla launch of halo infinite i don't think so maybe like a quick reference or something or some kind of like flashback scene maybe or just some kind of like audio reference of between the dialogue i can see that happening but i will not expect to see them in the game maybe down the line when we have 10 years of a planned halo experience with halo infinite so you think 10 years down the line Will we see Fred, Kelly, and Linda? I highly suspect that to happen. Would that happen at launch? I really don't think so. I think the vanilla story is gonna be pretty straightforward with like a Master Chief focused story like they've mentioned previously. I think if you're gonna bring Fred, Kelly, and Linda into the storytelling of Halo Infinite, you would need to have a really serious threat to your gameplay experience like story-wise like be it like atriox or the flood or some kind of thing like the didact comes back and he's just extra pissed off or even crazier mendicant bias the reason why i think it's such a grand scale threat is needed to bring these kind of characters back into the game is because the original feel of halo was that like you were the only spartan you were the only spartan in the game essentially and from halo one through three until it wasn't until like reach where we actually got a chance to play as multiple spartans which kind of like dumbs down this how special it feels to be a spartan because you see other spartans around then halo 4 like spartans everywhere halo 5 spartans everywhere everyone's a spartan now but bringing in these extra spartans does kind of diminish the player power fantasy that we have when we play games like halo and we do know that halo infinite's co-op campaign online will have four player capabilities though it would be just two player split screen on your one xbox so adding fred kelly and linda would certainly be great additional playable characters in a four player co-op campaign kind of situation just saying but if you like these kind of videos or miss any content from me recently or beyond out of the loop of halo for the last few days or so well check out these news and informational videos i got right here all linked within this post right here thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out